There have been some big moves in this transfer window so far with Harry Kane going to Bayern Munich for 93.6 million and Rodrigo joins Chelsea from Real Madrid for 64 million pounds. We didn't spend a massive amount of money yesterday, but we did spend the majority of what we have left, which was around about 20 million pounds. We brought in Jesus Viejo. We have a new starting centre-back. We'll be looking to replace Nicola and Kulu next season, sell him on, buy in for Kayo Tomori, and then we'll be looking very, very solid indeed as a defensive outfit moving forward. We could do with being slightly more solid recently than we have been. We've been drawing far too many games in the league recently. A draw against Bournemouth, a draw against Burnley, a draw against Aston Villa, three straight draws in a row in the league following a defeat against Ast uh, Nottingham Forest. So uh, we went three 1-0 victories in a row. And then have uh, not won a game for four. So it's time to start winning again. We'll start with Crystal Palace. We'll finish the transfer window. And then we've got Liverpool away, which arguably is probably not going to be a, uh, a victory. But hopefully we can uh, still perform well enough to get a draw in that one. I'd like four points from today's episode if we can get them, please. But Crystal Palace are never a shove, uh, a pushover. So uh, we'll have to fight just as hard in this one as ever before. I am sorely tempted, no, I'm not even, it's not even that one. I'm sorely tempted to give Adama a start over Bowen. Adama's been very good recently off the bench. Perhaps he is better utilised off the bench, but we'll give him the start here. And obviously, John Kevin Augustin has been much better in front of goal recently than Divock Origi. And Jesus Viejo will make his debut. Two games today and the end of the January transfer window. Can we finish January strong? Even though we've got our transfer business done, let's finish strong on the field as well. Crystal Palace... With Loris Karius in goal. Four at the back. Ward, Gunduz, Martin Kelly and Ganaka. Then Caicedo, Boateng, McGregor, Kuyate and Jeffrey Schubert. It's a very small midfield outside of Kuyate, isn't it? He was noticeably massive compared to everybody else. Borja Mayoral up top. Shout out to Southampton, Karim as ever. They have five in midfield. But... We might be able to dominate them. Provided they're not as good on the ball as Bournemouth were yesterday... We should be able to outmuscle this back line and try and dominate them. That's what I'm going to try and do. We'll see if we can actually do it. Adama threw the gap there nicely to Jean Kevin Augustin. Trying his best to turn away from Martin Kelly, who dominates him. Defensively, they're still very good, but in the midfield, they might not be quite as good here, Crystal Palace. We'll wait and see how this one progresses. Down the line there to Adama. Wall Prowse. Short there from. Short support there from Tyler Roberts. Can we find Jean Kevin Augustin? We can. I get it back to Tyler Roberts. Maybe. <sighs> A lot of defenders back there. When those midfielders all fall back in. Oh, is he fouled there? No. Kuyate gets part of the ball. Those defenders all drop back in formation. They have <laughs> nine men in front of the ball. Or behind the ball, even. So it's particularly difficult to try and break that part, regardless of how tall or physically domineering those players are if you can't find a way through you can't find a way through corners come in here from Caicedo as they've done some attacking of their own not going to beat Alan San Maximan at the near post though but we won't get to that ball first McGregor down to Ward Corsair to Kelly just brushes off the attentions of two men around him in there to Jeffrey Slut and it's fallen free come on then Adama counter attack it's what we normally bring you off the bench to do can you do it from the starting lineup today we'll play this quickly mm, but not hard enough Looking for Jean-Kevin Augustin. Beautiful opportunity for a counter-attacking chance that almost certainly would have ended in a goal. But again, an under-hit misplayed pass denies us that opportunity. Vallejo trying to get him a clean sheet on debut. Mopping up well at the back. Impressed with his start so far. It's the first time I've even noticed him be involved in the play. Ward with the ball into the middle. Emerson wins that header at the back post. It's not the best of clearances, but Malassia... With not the best of clearances. Come on, lads. We need to be better, please. Alan San Maximan, not strong enough in that challenge. Wins that ball back, and then we will counter. Malassia well, could get in behind here. Doesn't get the opportunity to push forward all that much from left back. But we'll play in Augustin. Tyler Roberts is there, and Jean Kevin will go again. Oh, all of those small, tiny midfielders in their forward line, but it's always Sheku Kuyate. I find myself coming up against in a minute. That's particularly annoying. Borja Mayoral played in behind. That's over hit, though. Out for a goal kick. Half an hour played. Nil-nil. Look for Divock. Not Divock. It's Jean-Kevin Augustin, isn't it? Tell how much I've been playing Divock Origi. 
Divock Origi recently. Oh, Tyler Roberts tries his best. Can't work the angle. And then touch, takes it out for a goal kick. That was a good chance there. Just couldn't quite find the right angle to try and squeeze that home. The keeper filled the goal mouth expertly. Positioned himself brilliantly. And as such, we weren't able... War challenge. Won the ball, but it was from behind, so it's a foul. We weren't able to work the angle to get the goal on that occasion. Maybe here, Sean Kevin making the right run. Again, could maybe look for a teammate. Ah, but can't find him on this occasion. Kuyate is everywhere for them. Cannot get away from him. Good delivery by James Ward Prowse. Keeper will come. Not the best of punches, but it will find a teammate. Caicedo will look to counter attack, but Malasio's put a stop to that. Look for Alan Samaximan quickly to Tyler Roberts. Well blocked. It'll fall to James Ward Prowse. And Kuyate is there again. I wish he would piss off home. Right to Emerson. Adama is making the moves down the right and has the pace, obviously, to get to that when we pop the ball in behind. Lift it towards the back post. Oh, where Sam Maximan was arriving, Caicedo, anywhere will do for him with Tyler Roberts lurking. What can we do here? I see Dukuri there. Find the right angle for a pass to a teammate in the box. Not really. Emerson, James Ward Prowse drops the shoulder nicely. Tyler Roberts quickly to Jean Kevin Alexander. Look at just the sheer number of Crystal Palace men back there. It's a great save by Carrius. But there's just so many defenders back here. I can't find a way past them. Can we win that header? Viejo on debut! Oh, so close. Or at least it looked like it was close. Really good opportunity. Just bending away at the last moment and not finding the back of the net. Win that header, Malasia. Well up. Dominating well against their smaller midfielders there. I, just, I find myself gravitating towards Sheku Kuyate again. I need to keep the ball away from him. Keep the ball away from Kiate, and we will find a way through. Augustin might do that right here. Carries with another good save. And Joel Ward wins the head up against Tyler Roberts. Keeping the ball away from Kiate is going to be instrumental in us getting a positive result here. Traore can nod that down. So Maximo will pick up the loose ball. Oh, it was meant for Traore, but it's Ducore that's picked it up. Here's Sam Maximan again. Looking for Augustin. He's turned brilliantly. Surely this time is he going to go in? I can't score against Crystal Palace. It won't go in. Go on, Tyler. Bang that. No. Oh, Jesus. I can't. I can't score. Loris Karius will not concede a goal. Calvin Phillips, who's come off the bench. Josh King, who's done similarly. Ducouré. Oh, that would have been a lovely ball round the corner if it could have found its way through. I made two changes. Calvin Phillips has come on for James Ward-Prowse, so Ducouré will be pushing slightly further forward. And Josh King has come on for Tyler Roberts, who actually hasn't been performing that well of late. Having a bit of a drop-in performance, Tyler Roberts. Kind of similarly mirroring our own drop-in results as a team. Drawing comparisons that if Tyler Roberts plays well, we play well. If Tyler Roberts underperforms, the team doesn't get the results it should. Time running out for me here. Decore forward to Josh King, around the corner to Calvin Phillips. Out wide here to Malasia. Alan Samaximan is available down the left and I'll look to play him in. Got John Kevin Augustan there of support, but Joel Ward has defended that superbly. What a slide tackle that was to intercept the pass. Can we outmuscle him? No. I am waiting to bring Divock Origi off the bench, but I made the change about 10 to 15 in game minutes ago and it just hasn't yet happened. Ball hasn't got out of play yet. It might go out of play sooner rather than later, but hopefully, if it does, it's going to be. From us scoring a goal. Emerson into Adama. Counter with pace. Keep going, Adama. Augustan over the top. Into his stride. Turn. Oh, it's brilliantly done. Pull it back to a teammate. Ducore, no. Blocked well. We are inching our way towards a fourth straight Premier League draw. Unless Alione can do something here. And he has to do it now. Because the whistle will go as soon as the ball goes away from goal. And it's a poor cross. And that will be... Oh, get rid of it! <sighs> Breathe. That will be our fourth straight Premier League draw. A clean sheet, which is a positive. But we are struggling to score goals at the minute. There have been times this season where we can't help but score goals. Very solid defensively in that game. But we just... Kept hitting the woodwork and Nick Pope kept uh, saving it against Burnley yesterday. We tried and tried and tried against Bournemouth and it took two goals late on to get a draw there. 
And here we battered. Uh, our offense is in shape. We battered Crystal Palace, but couldn't find a way past Loris Carius. Um, well, I don't believe we were the worst team. We're certainly the better team. Our uh, defense deserves praise, certainly. Jesus Viejo getting a, a clean sheet on debut. Hopefully other teams around us are also not performing right now. It's a busy, well, it's been a busy Christmas spell. And with FA Cup games and replays in the FA Cup as well, it's not been the most straightforward of January's either. Thankfully, February sees a step back in the intensity of fixtures. We'll have to wait and see if it sees a step up in the intensity and positivity of results. The biggest transfer deals so far in this window as we head into deadline day, still Rodrigo, Kane and Lindelof. Wait and see what else happens between now and deadline day. If I can sell Gazzaniga or Danny Rose on deadline day, I'm still open to it. Because obviously we'll get the 113 million for Tyler Roberts. We'll still get the, um, the money next season because of the realism mod. Tyler Roberts must have astronomical potential if he's valued at over £100 million pounds right now, 82 rated. It, the realism mod does take into account transfer for Jean-Kevin Augustin. Does take into account a player's potential, dynamic potential, when factoring in their market value. And evidently, Tyler Roberts' market value means that his potential is so very high. 82 rated currently, but he's growing well this season. Transfer for Jamie Shackleton, which we shall reject. He's going to play a big part for us in the squad as we push into European football, which hopefully will be next season. We are going to have to do it via a league finish now because we're at the FA Cup as per yesterday's episode. Were there any bigger deals than that Lindelof one? No. So Kane at 93.6, Rodrigo at 64 and Lindelof at 35.4. The biggest deals of the window uh, this season in January. We'll see what everybody did. Ebbisi has left Bournemouth. He played against us yesterday. So that's since our fixture against them. Two players loaned or pre-contract signings at Arsenal. Uh, one in uh, Villa, similarly Green going out, Taylor out at Burnley, he played against us as well for Burnley, so that's recently done. Zuma out at Chelsea with Rodrigo going in as we saw, Eastman in at Palace, nothing done by Everton, only Vieja in for us, although Emerson joined us in January, but we signed the deal in December. Soyuncu and Jamal Assel will be leaving Leicester, Martinez and Danea in at Liverpool. Soyuncu is going to Manchester City. That is a hell of a signing for them. Salcedo and Bamba in a city. Uh, United even, sorry, with Lindelof going out. Nothing done by Forrest. Only O'Connell and Hanlon as pre-contracts for Sheffield United. El Yanusi leaving Southampton as well as Vestergaard. Harry Kane and Bamba, Jonathan Bamba, leaving Tottenham. Bamba's not been there long. Obviously not having much of an impression on their first team. A little bit of work by Watford and West Ham. Nothing by Wolves and that. It's how the January transfer window played out. We'll have a quick look at the other larger deals that went through in January. And then from there, we shall push into the game against Liverpool. Not edit transfers. Push into the game against Liverpool and try our best to get some more points. I said I wanted four points in today's episode. That means I'm going to have to beat Liverpool to get that. Any other January dealings? Let's have a scroll through. It's going to be at least down as 34, as far as 34 million, isn't it? Because that's the third biggest one. There is that Lindelof deal. Rashitza to Paris Saint Germain from Roma for 35.3. Ferran Torres to Frankfurt for 34. Carlos Soler to Inter. Any others that stand out? Mendes to Atleti. Jonathan Bambo has gone to Manchester United for 26.8. Thomas Partey to Wolfsburg at 29 years of age. It's not a bad fee for a player of his ability, even though he's pushing on in age. Kenny Tett or Tetter to AC Milan, and that's the last deal that we can see. I'm happy enough with January, signing a new right back and a centre back. Frustrating that we weren't able to get Tamori in, but fingers crossed we will be able to do that in January next year. Uh, he'll prove he's the right man, certainly. You would imagine. Tomorrow we'll take it. Well, we're at one in five. We better break. Um, I'm going to say we're not getting to the mind games. Certainly against Liverpool because they're obviously much better than us. We did beat them 3-0 last time we played them. But whether we'll be able to replicate that, I'm really unsure. We shall wait and see. Time to go to Anfield. Liverpool's 11. 
This is going to be strong as ever. Danea at right back. Joe Gomez fil filtered in at centre back though. Ceballos, Firmino, Genduzi. The front three is always the same so far in this save. Salah has four goals in his last three games as well. Hoover dropped to the bench, and to be fair, it's probably the right move. Perhaps he could have played Gomez at right back and Denea in the middle. Although I'm sure Jason Denea will be good enough at right back. It's a much different physical outlook to this side than the one we just played. Crystal Palace had a number of smaller guys. This Liverpool side is huge in midfield and defence, particularly in defence. We might well struggle here. We'll wait and see what Anfield has to offer us. But Mo Salah is trying to, well, overdo things by the looks of the way he moved there. He was basically past me and he ended up turning back. Alex that could send Bowden in behind. Kimpemba just runs off with the ball. Yeah, this is going to be a really difficult game, I think. We got not necessarily fortunate against Liverpool last time, but things definitely went in our favour more so than they did against us, to be fair. They have done in the opening five minutes here as well, but we'll wait and see how the overall game pans out. Looking for Jared Bowen in behind there. But Andy Robertson does well. Ten minutes in, nil-nil. Sound like smell of the throat. Decore has come across. Right there to Malasia. There's Tyler Roberts. Augustan. Oh, Ward Prowse! Mm. Did I need the extra pass? Maybe not. Oh, Allison's made himself massive there. Which has obviously affected Walprowse's composure. And he's tried to get it around that outstretched right boot. And couldn't do it. Looking for the far corner and just not accurate enough in the finish. To Kure forward there to Augustan. Oh, looking for Bowen. Poor pass from Liverpool though, trying to break away. We could yet take the lead here. Tyler Roberts looking to accelerate away. Walprowse played in. Really fortunate with how the ball falls through. Sam Maximin! Sam Maximin! Oh, he's offside. My immediate glance there as the ball dropped to Bowen wasn't to him taking the shot it was to the linesman <sighs> it would have been the luckiest goal to go 1-0 up and oh it's ever so close if Allison's right hand there I think that should count I think that should count we should be 1-0 up let me know in the comment section do you think I was onside there with Bowen I think so Salah Help is arriving. Malassia gets the tackle in. Help has now arrived. Oh, early ball by Ceballos. Oh, calmly done. Calmly done. Ben White will just drive forward. There's Jared Bowen. Nice turn. Early ball. He's onside here, Tyler Roberts. I'm certain of it. Tyler, please. Yes! He hasn't scored for a while, Tyler Roberts. But that was a brilliant run. And just timed to perfection. Onside, clean through, 95 acceleration, 97 sprint speed. You're not catching him. 1-0 leads. Here's Salah played in behind. Nice tackle immediately by Malassia. It's been so easy to read Mo Salah in this game so far. He's just going to turn wherever he can get his left foot involved. Very reluctant so far to use that right foot. I'm not sure how old Mo Salah Bobby Firmino, Sadio Mane are in this save now. I imagine they're in their early 30s. They must be, surely, four years into a, into a save. So I don't recall them being that young in real life. All of them have been around for a while now. Salah might be still 28 or so. San Maxima is whiskers away from giving us a second goal here at Anfield. We're playing... Amazingly well against Liverpool again. It would be absolutely typical of FIFA as a game for me to get to go so long without a win, four straight draws in the league, and then play Liverpool and beat them just as we did last time we played them. They're giving it away, but Joe Gomez has used great physical strength to win the ball back, and now he's doing exactly the same to hold on to it. But he's gonna lose it. Oh, but they win it back again. Trying to break them down here. We do look like we're going to have a 1-0 lead at the half-time mark. But it could have been a step further on too. And still yet could be. Ducouré. Augustin. Bowen is there. Hit it early on his left foot. Well blocked by Andy Robertson. Tyler Roberts is not going to beat Jason Denea in the air. And it will just be 1-0 at the break. 
Tyler Roberts trying to shake off Fabinho. He's done that brilliantly. In there to Ben White. Tyler's there again. At least that was who the ball was intended for. Genduzi wins it off me. We haven't been as dominant in this game as we were at home against Liverpool, but still we look like the better team. Potential of a loose pass there, but Denai's done brilliantly to keep it in. And now Mo Salah's in behind. Up against Ducori for pace. Tries to play the ball early. Hits it straight against him. Now he's in behind again. Is he going to turn on that left as ever? He is. Ben White with the block. Oh, what a save. No, what was that? Mane out muscled. Away will do, please. Anywhere. Bowen wins that header. Tyler Roberts wins that one. Firmino, it drops to him. Genduzzi, how they have an equal ace here. Liverpool, I'm not sure. I fell. Genduzzi there. No advantage given. Ben White steps in and we now come away with the ball. Deary me. Augustin looking for Sam Maxima up against Jason Deneo, who's going to outmuscle him comfortably. Oh, that got a little bit hectic. Fabinho, we've got Tottenham next at the beginning of the next episode, so things aren't going to get any easier in the league. Fabinho, oh, Firmino even back to Fabinho. They're trying their best to recycle possession in Liverpool, but they're not playing very well. That's the best opportunity they've had to score all game long. I'll bring Adama on for Bowen. We'll bring Shackleton on for Wal Wal Prowse, And I would imagine that we will still be able to hold on to this 1-0 lead after those changes have been made. Mane into the middle. Okay. We're not going to hold on to that 1-0 lead. Not entirely too sure how that's gone in, to be honest. Let's have a look at a replay. Fabinho was the wrong side of the defender. Mm, not sure about that, Mr. Viejo. He just didn't respond at all to the uh, the pressing of the clear ball button. Okay. They're level. Gomez over the top. Win that header, please. Well up, Emerson. It's been such a quiet addition to the starting lineup, Emerson. Relatively unmentioned. Oh, Adama. He's in. Oh, have I overrun that? No. No, we haven't. Adama Traore off the bench. His pace integral again to our success. As a substitute, thought I'd overrun it. I've done that a couple of times this season with Alan San Maxi Mound, but Adama just that little bit faster than the Frenchman. And even though there was a heavy touch just there, he squeezes in ahead of Alisson, the goalkeeper, lifts it over him, and it just drops in time to dip under the bar. Oh, it was very near, very nearly over. Just dips in time, and we have ourselves our lead back again. Sabayos off. Naby Keita on, 15 minutes to hold on to this 2-1 lead. Genduzzi just messing about with the ball here, not actually making any progress Liverpool, although last time I criticised them, they ended up scoring a goal through Fabinho's head. So we shall try and deny them an opportunity to do so again. Don't let yourself be jinxed for a second time, Cheese Noid. Get to that, Josh. Thank you. Bloody hell. He seems to just jog towards that as I was holding the sprint button. Shackleton across here to Decore. He's not going to get to that. A terrible attempt at a slide tackle as well. Genduzzi turns well. Finds Keita looking to play a cheeky first time ball over the top. Doesn't quite work. Second time round fails as well. Time's running out for Liverpool here. They've only moments to go to get themselves that second equaliser. And it's not going to happen, hopefully. Josh King is off the bench here. Adama, I'm going to play him into the channel. I'm sorely tempted to hold the ball in the corner, but I'm not going to because I've got people arriving here on the edge of the box that can waste enough time for me. Anyway, ah, that was meant to go essentially, but Adam was offside. I mean, either way, it wastes time, I guess. Was that Curtis Jones coming off the bench? I'm not sure. Jason Denier going off. Oh, no, it was Hoover, the uh, centre-back that played against us last time we faced Liverpool. It's been a closer game on this occasion than it was last time, but as was the case at Ellen Road, Unless Salah creates something here, which he won't. We'll get the win against Liverpool yet again. Slightly frustrated with the way that their goal came about, but sometimes FIFA does FIFA. Or FIFA does FIFA things. Hashtag just FIFA things. I'm pleased enough with that. I said I wanted 14, uh, four points, and uh, we got four points. Uh, disappointing debut. I mean, it wasn't his debut. He did make a bit of a mistake there, but we'll say he's capable of a bit more. He's grown, actually, as well. Uh, Augustin deserves all the praise, as has Ben White, actually. 
And finally, the wait for a win is over. We're ready to turn things around and start driving towards the top of the table, at least the upper reaches of the table anyway. A transfer offer for price of £2.3 million. Pounds. Ha ha! Go away. Not a chance. So we'll start tomorrow's episode with the game against Tottenham then. One more training session here. Jack Clark improving slightly. I'll quickly show you the improvements to the squad. Maybe we'll have a squ uh, cheeky mid-season squad report. Not done that for ages. Uh, so, stat-wise, I'll just whiz through rather than giving you an in-depth one. Miller's up three, Engel up three, Malassio up two, Danny Rose is dropping, still trying to sell him though, obviously, Gazaniga similarly, but he's not dropped in rating. Elliot Price is up one, Bradley Price is up five, Ben White up two, he's 85 rated now, Jesus Viejo has grown since we bought him in yesterday's episode, so thrilled with that. Up one, annoyed about the Liverpool goal, but it didn't cost us a game in the end. Uh, no growth for Riedabald or Nkulu, understandably, but crucially, no overall decline for Nkulu. In fact, some of his stats, his acceleration has gone up, whilst other stats have gone down. Odd. Um, Isaac Price, five-star skills for him as a six-foot centre-back or right-back, up two. Um, Emerson, sorry, Cooper up one, Emerson, no Fredericks down one, still looking to sell him on. Calvin Phillips up two, Will Prowse and Shackleton up one, Milner down two, he's retiring at the end of the season. Tyler Roberts is up two to 82 rated now, continuing to look very good. Bogus up one, Jared Bowen up two, Tyler Wright up two, Jack Clark up one, Pablo Hernandez down one, Sam Maxima up one, Morris is up two out on loan at uh, Getafe. Adama Traore up 1 to 80 rated, Josh King down 1 but still been decent for us, Origi no change and Jean-Kevin Augustin is also up 1. Overall uh, goals, Origi and Jared Bowen currently my top goal scorers, although Augustin has 4 in 12 Premier League games, 7 in, uh, well actually Origi has the better goal scoring record doesn't he, Seven, 1 in every 3 for him and 1 in every oh, 3 for Jean-Kevin Augustin, they're actually matching each other. But Augustan obviously not played as many games so far this season. Jared Bowen, top goal scorer, joint. Sam Maximum with seven, Tyler Roberts with seven. Assist wise, Zerigi has 10 actually, and he's been chipping in a lot in the Premier League. So maybe he is slightly better than we've given him credit for at times. The league table is still very, very tight. In fact, let me advance to that Tottenham game. Transfer off for Jean Kevin Augustan here, which we will again reject. If we get European football and we look to bring. Uh, Erling Braut Holland into the club. Oh, a transfer offer for Ryan Fredericks. I'm just going to accept it. Just to try and get the deal done. I'm not going to try and negotiate an extra £1 million. Anything is better than nothing at this stage. So we'll have a look to see what the league table looks like when everybody's uh, finished playing those games in hand. Nice to see both prices growing well there. Cooper's strength is now maxed out at 99 so Spurs is who we have next, and we could go above them with a win. Frederick sold to FC20. That's great. That will be added to next season's budget. Superb. So we are eighth. Three points above West Ham, a point behind United, two behind Tottenham, and three behind the Champions League spot placed Everton in fourth. That victory against Liverpool has changed the outlook of our season. City have drawn two games now as well, back-to-back. -back. So their momentum is slowing down. Is the title race opening up? Probably not. The race for the top four definitely is. And we'll crack on in tomorrow's episode with Spurs, West Ham and Manchester City as we push to try and get ourselves into that top four position. At least fifth. At least fifth this season. And we'll see significant improvements to our budget if we're able to do so for next season's summer transfer window. It's hotting up. Will we make European football? We'll find out over the next three or four episodes or so. I'll see you tomorrow for the next one.